Company, welcome back. I'm the Strategy Professor, and today we're going to be doing another coaching session, and this one's going to be for Vagar Support. So special thanks to Adam for the donation. Really appreciate it. Uh, if you're new to the channel, we're going to start off first talking a little bit of a pregame about Vagar Support, um, good times to pick him, good runes, items, and like which abilities to get early on. And then we'll watch the game. I'll take some physical notes as we watch the game. And then at the very end, we'll bring it all together and try to give Adam the best 5 to 10 tips to help him improve. If you would like a coaching video yourself, you can email me at thestrategyprofessor at gmail.com. You can set that up. It's just $20, and I'll make a video just like this for you if you're interested in it. Um, if you would like to watch more coaching sessions, you can click on my coaching playlist. I think this will be the 91st session, so you can uh, browse around in there, see if there's some champions that you're interested in. Um, check out some of those and if you would like individual champion guides uh, then you can click on this link here as well um, you can always access this google doc in the description as well as timestamps. Um, so if you don't have time to watch the whole thing or you just want to skip straight to the game you don't care about the pre-game you can go ahead and do that also okay so let's go ahead and have a look here um, so as with all supports you want to try to aim for about one control ward per five minutes on average so 30 minute game six control wards and you want one normal ward per minute um, on average, so 30 minute game, 30 wards, unless um, you are running zombie wards, and if that's the case, then you want to average two wards per minute. Um, I recommend the following runes for Vagar in the preseason as of 8.2. Now, this could change, and probably will change with 8.3 because they're nerfing Spellbook, but you'll probably want to go Unsealed Spellbook, Stopwatch, Magical Footwear, Cosmic Insight, and then um, Mana Flow Band and Transcendence as your tier two. Now, that's what I saw most pro players doing. Now, um, now they are building for mid lane Vagar, who's actually a pretty decent counter, I hear, to things like Azir. Um, so he's getting played a decent amount, with 55% win rate um, by people in Challenger. Um, and as you can see, basically everybody takes Unsealed Spellbook on him. Now, there isn't any data, really, for support Vagar. Um... But I would assume it's probably similar. The reason why, and I think you're running Comet this game, from what I remember from the loading screen, you're probably running the standard, um, you know, Comet, Mana Flow Band, Celerity, Scorch, which is kind of the old school build. And I think you're running Domination. I'm not sure which runes of Domination. Um, you might be running the uh, Zombie Ward and Genius Hunter that I used to run. I'm not sure. But the reason that you want to run Spellbook is in lane, it'll give you more Ignites for more kill pressure. And Vagar is inherently a fairly unsafe champion, and so having your flash available more often uh, is really helpful. And then if you need to, kind of in the later game, you always have the option of taking teleport um, and sort of rotating around the map. He has pretty good pretty good flanking if you show up to a fight and you can just get that cage on people. But I think it's primarily just so you have more ignites for more kill pressure and um, just so you have more flashes so that you can play a little bit safer. So one of the biggest parts about Vagar's support is he has no escapes and he's really slow. So he's very easy to get caught out. Um, Comet is okay, but you don't have a, a really good consistent slow that you can apply to make sure you hit the Comet. If you hit your cage on somebody, um, then yeah, you'll probably hit him with Comet. But if you're just hitting him with Qs in lane, which is probably going to be the case, uh, a lot of your Comets may not connect. And a lot of stuff has been nerfed in the Sorcery Tree as well. So, and that's why I think Inspiration is uh, better, because Stopwatch is extremely good right now. Now, they're going to change that next patch, so you have to choose Footwear or Stopwatch. You'll probably want to go Footwear and then Biscuits. Biscuits are really good, too, for laning, especially on a champion that wants to trade, like Vagar, who doesn't have any innate sustain. Okay, and then itemization-wise... It's going to be different than what mid laners are doing because with pretty much any AP support, you always want to rush Haunting Guys, Sorcerer Boots. Okay, so you want to get your Tier 2 um, Frostfang, and then you want Sork Boots and Haunting Guys as fast as you can get it. That's because that's your fastest, biggest power spike is when you get the double pin items plus Frostfang. And then after that, you'll probably want to go for um, either completely Andres or just go for the full-on Void Staff. Full Void Staff is going to be your biggest damage. Now, you don't need Morello as much as Support Vagar. Um, the reason is you're already going to get some mana regen off your Frostfang. And Vagar is not that mana hungry. His abilities, if we look here, are relatively cheap. Like, his Q spam is pretty cheap in lane. It's only 40 or 50 um, ability power. Uh, this does get expensive later on, but 
the problem with Morello, it's it's really good. It has nice stats on it. it gives you 20% CDR, you know, 100 ability power. It gives you lots of mana regen. Like, it's not the worst thing in the world to get on Vagar, but you're sacrificing a lot of damage. I mean, 100 AP looks nice, but it's really that spell penetration that's going to be huge because he has really high base damages. Um, and he's already going to be stacking a lot of uh, AP so off of his Q. So that's what I would run. You know, if you want to get a... Um, the, I'm blanking out on the name, but the part of the Morello Nomicon that gives you the mana regen that costs the 900 gold, you can get that early if you feel like you really, really need that mana regen. Um... But in general, I would I would just go for the damage as fast as you can. If you need that mana regen, so be it. But um, no, I would try, if at all possible, to stay away from Relonomicon and just go for the bigger damage. So just go for uh, Eye of the Watchers, Sork Boots, Leontries, Void Staff, and Ludens would be just your max damage build. And once again, the big ticket is once you get the Sork Boots plus the Haunting Guys, that's when you start one-shotting people kind of in the mid-game. Okay, and then I think you should get three points in Q for laning. This is your poke spell. It's going to allow you to stack your Phenomenal Evil, which is great. But I think that you should be maxing your E uh, beyond level 5. And the reason is, this is your huge team fight ability. Like, changing your stun from a 1.5 second to a 2.5 sec second stun is massive. 2.5 seconds is a ridiculous amount of stun time. And the cooldown goes down quite a bit, so you can cast it more often. This is your real power. Okay, like, yeah, your Q does some nice damage, your ult does some nice damage, but your real power as support Vagar is having a an AoE, like, three second. If someone touches it, they're going to get stunned for two and a half seconds. That's the real power, I think. And so leveling that up as support is uh, a really big deal, I think. So the two and a half seconds make sure that Dark Matter is going to hit. Um, even if they have Mercury Treads, Dark Matter is still going to hit. Um, and that's really a big part of your combo, is you want to stun somebody, Q um, you know, Dark Matter, then Primordial Burst, and you need to be able to hit all of those and then one-shot somebody. So. Alright, so I think that's, that's what I'll recommend, and Mana Flow does give you some extra mana. Transcendence is something, like, you can still get Celerity. I think after the nerf to Celerity, Transcendence is certainly worth considering. It does give you 10% CDR, which is something that AP supports really lack with most builds. Like, you get 10% off of Watchers, and that's about it. If you go Morellos, you'd get an extra 20%, but I think the 10% might be better than the 3% move speed. 10% CDR. Um, I don't know. That's something I've been toying around with lately, but I, I think it's certainly worth a shot because you do have really good cooldowns, especially with your cage and your ult. All right, let's go ahead and watch the game and see what we get into here. Manual camera. Blue side. Let's do it. Okay, so this matchup. Vagar is actually really good against Rakan. I play a lot of Rakan and. No, no, no. Don't, 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 don't. Yeah, and you don't want to start Cage either. You want to start Q. Yeah, don't ever try to invade by yourself. Just because, I mean, you don't know, like, they could have taken a weird path, like, wrapping around this way or something. It's unusual, but they could. You know, there's just, there's nothing you're going to accomplish out of that by yourself, other than seeing if they're at blue, which is, yes, they're going to be at blue. Um, but yeah, and you really want to start with Q. So that you can spam that Q on them early as much as you can. Okay, Rakan took coin, so he's a little bit less intimidating than he would be normally. Auto attack these waves a little bit, just like auto attack a couple of minions here. There you go. Yeah, land a Q on him. Um. Oh, you took Airy instead of Comet, huh? Yeah, I mean, it does give you... Ever since the nerf to Aerie, I don't really like that. I mean, I would prefer Comet, because at least it would give you a bit more burst. Okay, she has Comet. 
can't tell. Yeah, you're the one with the area, I think. Yes, you're the one with the area, and she has common. Okay. Aerie does give you a bit more of her ass early. I just feel like it's too all-in. I don't know. I feel like Aerie's just not worth it unless you're a healer or a shielder. After the nerfs. Just too little damage. Yeah, I would say definitely try out Spellbook, though. Over the next couple of days. We'll see. They might nerf it. They've said they might nerf it. That would be a great place to cage if you had it. Like, wait until he W's onto you and then do your cage. If you're going to use your Dark Matter, try to do it on minions. So at least you're pushing it in. So if you miss... Okay, nice. So that way if you miss them, um, then at least you're going to be wave clearing, which is good. Um, Vi shouldn't really try to do that much early. I assume she's going to power farm to six. No, you take too many tower shots, too many tower shots. And when you do land a cage on somebody, start your W first and then throw the Q. Because the W takes the most time to land, obviously. And early on, you're not going to have a lot of points in cage, so. <clears throat> you need to be harassing with Q more. Yeah, there you go. I think you're using too much mana on really low probability Ws. Like, just, just spam Q, you know. That's fine. That's how you stack your stuff early. Yeah, get up closer, get up closer, get up closer. Bait him, bait him, bait him, get up closer. Get up closer. Rams is coming in. Yeah, I see you were just out of range if you landed that stun. I don't know if you guys could have killed him, but... It certainly would have been a lot more interesting if you landed that stun. Yeah, no... Just back. Go ahead and back. Just tell her to back. She should have decent buys. I mean, I assume she's going to go Ghost Blade or Dust Blade, so... I guess if she wants to stay and their ADC backs, you should have stayed and pushed this wave. Want Helped her push it, because she's just sitting here wasting time. What'd you get? Okay, that's fine. She's wasting so much time. She didn't even get any push to tower. God, that's so aw Oh, Jesus. That's so bad. <sighs> okay, well, in this... You guys need to be aware that... Zaya is really far ahead now, so you cannot fight. Okay, well, you got his flash. Make sure you're communicating that. So when someone uses an ability, you need to be pinging it. Okay, it looks like Ram has pinged it for you. He was watching. Yeah, you need to try to not fight. Well, if Ramus comes, that's okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, let, her, let him go, let him go. Hey, W this. W this. Push this wave. Or W this. Like, use your W to wave clear. Hit the back line with the W. There you go. Q these. To lower them a little bit. Okay, good. Going back, going back, going back. She needs to back. Just go get something. Just go get, like, a, an amp tome or something. I know you got an assist on that. You probably have enough for an amp tome. I would just back and get something. Uh, no, don't mess with that. She's got smite. She's gonna get it. You're just exposing yourself to bombs. Yeah, this is pretty unproductive because mid mid lane's dead. I mean, I guess that's that's a good control ward, but you need to leave. Leave. Vi could hit six pretty soon.
Yeah, I'll hold on to your W. Like, because right here you could have had W. I mean, you guys killed him anyways, but... Like, really wait till you land a stun or till somebody's crowd controlled before you go for the W. That was good. It was a good sequence, though. Paid off. Y'all baited him pretty hard. Um... I would push this up. She's six. Yeah, see if you can get a cage here. Yeah, I would really chill. Like, that's something that we definitely I want you to work on is save your W because you keep Wing first on a low probability hit. And I don't think it's hit somebody yet who hasn't been crowd controlled. And then you use your cage. So I want you to get into the habit of using your cage first. And then after they get stunned or after they're just sitting in the middle of the cage, then you use your W. And it makes it a lot harder to dodge for the enemy. Obviously, they're not going to dodge if they're stunned, but even if they're in the middle of the cage... So, like, right there, that should have been a, a W into a Q. Good. Now, Vi's over here, so... And she could just jump over this wall and, like, ult you right now, potentially. Everybody's low on mana. Okay, good. They warded it. Yeah, just W this and just run. Don't worry about Cage, just W it. Just W the back line and then run. Y'all need to y'all need to get out of here. No, just just leave, just leave, just leave. Just just leave, dude. She <laughs> Rakan could come flying up with his E from like halfway across the map and then R W onto you. Like you need to just get out. Y'all are being way, way too greedy. Like, she's got to have, like, 2,000 gold right now. And you probably have, like, 1,500. I think y'all are playing with fire here. Yeah, and they double kill you. Yeah, you, you guys, you can't do that. It's way, way too greedy. You have to back. How much money did she have? Okay, she had a full Caulfield Warhammer. Full Ghost Blade. Okay, so she did have about 2,000 gold. And boots that she sold back. Now, what did you have? Zork boots, that's 1,100. That, that thing, I forgot what it's called. Uh, Lost Chapter, that's 900. So you were sitting on 2,000 gold. And then she had... She went from a Dirk to a Ghost Blade, which I think is... It's like 1,700 total gold, and then these things are 350 each. So she had like 2,400 gold. And you had like 2,000 gold, or somewhere close to 2,000 gold. Like, you guys, you have to back. <laughs> Especially if you're really low on health and mana. Okay, so let me... Like, just push them in and back. Because... Here's the thing, like, you don't get an advantage if you have a lot of gold in the bank. Like, if you have 2,400 gold in your account, then that's 2,400 gold that in power that you don't have. So, yeah, you know, she was 4-0, but she might as well be, you know, or 4-1, she might as well be 0-1 because she's not spending any of the gold. Like, the score only matters if you actually spend the gold, you know? Now, what do they have? Look at their items. Um... Zaya's behind, but she can still hurt. Rakan is pretty irrelevant. Yeah, hold on to those W's. Okay, Cage. Alright, there you go. Boom, perfect. That's what I want to see. W, Q, and then R. Kill. Great. Perfect. That's picture perfect what you want to do there. Okay, let's see here. Push this in and go get Dragon. Y'all are pretty big right now.
GP might have ult. I guess he does. Um, but yeah, y'all need to leave. Just get this. Just get it. You guys are so far ahead, just fight him. Yeah, y'all are like 30 seconds too late on this though. You gotta be faster than that. Like, you gotta ping it and just let them know. Like, go get it right now. Like, as soon as you push this up, you have to be crisp and say, okay, right here, right here, right here. Ping this and then just type, push and drag, push and drag. Cager. Laura. Where, where's the W? Did you W Dragon? Don't don't use your big cooldowns on dragons. Like just only use Q's. Cause if you had a W, she would have been dead. Let me go back and look and see. I think that's what happened, right? You W the dragon. What's not cooldown? Yeah. Yeah, don't do that. Only use Q's on it, because right now, look, if you had W. She would have died. Yeah, but you know, it's like, you're, I, I still don't think your mana is that much of a problem. I know you're going for Morello here. I just, I would really like to see the Haunting Guy Sork boots. Don't follow him. Just let him die. Get this tower. Get the tower. Don't don't chase these people. Just get this tower. Kill the tower, guys. I feel like you should have ulted something in there. Like maybe ulted that recon. You, you guys did kill him anyways, but I feel like there's a lot of stuff going on there, and somewhere along the line there should have been an ult. Well, that paid off, but in general, just ping the tower. Just tell your team, get the tower, and quit chasing people past, you know, tier 1 and tier 2. Like, y'all are really far ahead, but that, you like, you haven't won, you know? Like, it's, you can still throw the game.
Yo, I need to get Rift. Okay, after you get this, I want you to go get Rift. No, 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 don't. Just get Tower. Just get Tower. Okay, good ult. Okay, push this in. Back up. Go get Rift. Well, they're, they're screwing this up pretty royally. They might still turn it around on you, though. Teemo's pretty big, though, I think. He's got three kills. Okay. I guess your team could push. I, I mean, if they... If they had not just set in the full Misfortune ult... <laughs> I feel like they could have killed you. I mean, they all died with their ults. Like, Vi had ult. Zed had ult. Zaya had ult. <laughs> Alright, let's speed this up a bit. We got Morello. Yeah. Okay, so. I hope you're working towards uh, either Haunting Guys or Void Stuff. Okay, just don't get caught up in this clownery here and like flash in and just Y'all are definitely killing everybody, but you need to they need to chill a little bit. Get this tower, get this tower. There's a wave right here. Okay, I guess you can get this one. Get this one then. And then get ready for drag. Drag's up five seconds. It's only a wind dragon, but that's still important. Tell her not to back, ping her back. Okay. Okay, good. Get tower, get tower, get tower. Tell them not. Okay, Vi's top side. That's free dragon. Alright, back up right now. Go get dragon. Okay, good. You called it. Call it more though. Ping it like three or four times. No, not wolves. Dragon. Not blue, not wolves. Dragon. Y'all are wasting time. Like, there's three people top. You could have already had the dragon, and you could have pushed tier two. Actually, you should get tier two right now, because there's three or four people top. Yeah, just get tier two. Y'all need to get something. They sent four people top to chase Teemo. They could, in theory, go for Baron right now. I mean, I don't... Vi's probably not tanky enough for that. No, she's not. She's going, like, a really greedy all-in build. She does have Ninja Tab Eye. No, get Tower... They're way off sides. They're on wards. Like, y'all have to get this tower. Look, it's like... Three auto attacks from all of you collectively would have killed that tower. Yes, dragon's fine. Okay, watch out. You need to back up. Back up. Okay, go ahead and drop it. Yeah, there you go. Drop it. Ooh. Yeah, you need to cage, W, Q immediately, ult, and then run back. Like, you can't cage and then wait, like, two seconds and then go in for, you know, your stuff. Like, you have to cage and immediately cast stuff and then run. While the cage covers for you. Okay, I assume you're going Void Staff, which is good. You can't die with ult, though. You gotta use your ult right there. Even if it's not a kill shot, just use it. Like, if someone's caged, just go ahead, WQ ult them. You know, just get them down to, like, 10% or something. And just let somebody else kill them. But you can't die with your ult. You gotta use it on somebody. Alright, right here. Cage her. She's on wards. Cage her. Cage her. Okay, blow her up. W, Q, ult. Are you maxing your Kate? What are you, what are you leveling? Well, you max your Q first. I would have liked to have seen Cage first, but Q's alright, I guess. But yeah, more Cages. You notice Cage is your big thing, right? Like, Q isn't the thing that's making a difference in these fights. It's your Cage, right? 
So you want your cage, because when your cage is not up like that, then that's when they get in to kill you. So you want your cage up as much as possible, because that's your, that's what's important in the mid game here. Your Q, you know, doing an extra 100 damage or something, like that's, that's good and everything, but it's really, your cage is the big deal. More cage, the stun lasts much longer. That's what you want. Like, y'all have enough damage. And your Q is still gonna hit like a truck. And so is your ult, like... You know, missing 100 damage off a of Q or whatever is not gonna be the end of the world. The CDR doesn't... I mean... Like, Q is good, but it... You see what I'm saying? Like, cage is the big thing. Like, that's what determines these fights, is your cage. If you hit somebody with it, they're dead. If it's on cooldown, you have no protection, and you're probably dead. So, you know, your Q doing 100 damage is not going to matter in these fights. Not as much as Cage. Okay, what you got? You got your Void Stab. Stopwatch. No, don't get, um... Don't get... Well, I guess Hourglass against Zed's not... Not ridiculously bad. I guess that's alright. I think if you wanted to go that, then... I mean, you definitely should have gone Inspiration, so that you could cash in that stopwatch. <laughs> yeah, you, sh you need to be with the team. I think you're splitting up too much with Teemo here. I mean, y'all are going to get something for it, but... It worked out, but in general, you need to be with the core team and not the uh, not the split pusher, because you're the one that has the zone of control that helps to make sure these guys don't get engaged on that five people. They got pretty lucky they got away with all that without anybody dying. Okay, yeah, let's back up. No, 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 no. They're gonna, it's about to be five people over here. Okay, good. That was a good ult. Cage. Okay, good. Alright, it worked out. Um, super risky. No, don't play with him. Just let him go. Just wait on Ramus. Now, if you take Unsealed Spellbook, yeah, you might be able to split a side lane and take Teleport later. Like, sw swap your Ignite out for a Teleport. And that might be viable, but I wouldn't split unless you have Teleport. Back up. Just let him die. Too close. You're too close. Run, 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 run. Yeah, you should just let him. Just let him die. If there's somebody over here, it's like 1v3. Just let him go. If you do want to make a play on it, you can try to cage and then, you know, just WQ and run away. But I feel like that's still pretty risky. Y'all need to go get that wind dragon. 
ping him down there. Just Teemo can do it. And he's just wandering around randomly. Like, just tell him to go do it. And Morg. Just go get Dragon. Like, they can't leave their base, really. I mean, he did get a kill off of it. I mean, I guess people are just randomly, like, walking into places and dying. That's fine. Who? Okay, Vi's dead. Alright, good. We got the Baron. Working on it. Now remember, save. What level is your W at? Okay. I guess that's fine, you probably won't need your W here at this point, and you have a lot of CDR. Okay, cage him. Wait, where'd you go? No, up here, up here's the action. Okay. Um, go push in top. I'll go push in top and then walk over to bot, then that way there's extra pressure on this lane. It's about the same distance to go here as it is to like loop all the way over here. Okay, get, get this, get inhibitor. Come on, Ramus. Down. Okay. Alright, well, it worked out. There's a lot of things that obviously I, <laughs> I thought could be optimized, uh, but, you know, they, the enemy was not punishing a lot of, a lot of the greed that was going on. I thought, <laughs> I thought you played it pretty well, but the, like some of the other people were being way too greedy, um, and I think that in future games that might come back to bite you. But we'll see. So what what can you do better? What can you improve on that? Um, okay, so one of the biggest things is Okay, so save your W to chain with CC. The only time you should be just Wing without CC is if you're trying to hit the back line of minions to push. So if they just happen to be standing near the back line of minions, and it's not going to matter if you miss them or not because you're just trying to push anyways, then sure, chuck a W on them. But it's kind of expensive level 1. Like, it's not super expensive, but if you're putting it together with your other spells, um, you know, 60 does add up when you're throwing a lot of Qs. Like, 60 could be you know, an extra 50% of Baleful Strike Qs, you know, early on. Or maybe not quite that much, because you're going to have... It's going to cost 50 at level 3. But it's it's that's mana you could be spending on Qs. And it has an extremely low probability of hitting them. So, and especially if you're planning on caging them anyways, then cage first, then W. So there were like three times early on in the game where I saw you try to W them, they dodged it, and then you used your cage. You caged them, you hit them with the cage, but then all you had to follow up with was a Q. You want to wait till you cage and then W on top of them. And you need to W like immediately when you cage. It has pretty has a pretty long range. Yeah, it's got 900 range. So when you cage somebody, you need to immediately W on top of them, Q them, auto them, and then back up and take that trade. So I think holding on to the W. Another option is if Miss Fortune uses Make It Rain, which she wasn't doing that very much in lane. And to be fair, it is expensive for an AD carry to spam that. She should be using more of her mana on Qs, which she was. But if she ever hits them with Make It Rain and slows them down, that's when you can W, because they're not going to be able to dodge it as easily. So just wait on her to Make It Rain or wait to cage them to use your W. Otherwise, my next point is I want you to spam your Q on them a lot more in lane. So you did it some, obviously, but try to do it more. Because remember, it not only pokes them down, it not only does pretty good damage for its mana cost, but it also gives you extra stacks of Phenomenal Evil, so that you gain an extra ability power. So that means every time you hit them, think of it like this. Every time you hit them, you're getting about 22 gold. Because one ability power is 21.75 gold worth of value. So every time you hit them, it's like you're getting a, a, a kleptomancy on steroids. right? You're getting an extra 22 gold every time you hit them. So... That's really good, and it's very cheap. You know, it's only 
40 mana, has really good range, 950 range. You can throw it through minions. Um, so you should be using this pretty much every time it's off cooldown. And at level 3, it's a pretty good bargain. I mean, you do 150 damage for uh, 50 mana. So that's a 3 to 1 cost. So that's, that's really good. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I would be doing, is spamming Q more, W less, unless you hit your cage. I do like going for the cage when it's off cooldown. Um, and you gotta play back a little bit, though, when it's on cooldown, especially if Rakan has his ult. Okay, but that's very, very good against Rakan. If you cage Rakan, he's gonna get hit with a bunch of stuff. Another option, even if they don't get stunned by cage, if you throw the cage right on top of them, it's very hard to dodge that W if you put it right in the middle. Um... So don't use large cooldowns on Dragon early. So that's mostly just with Vagar as a W. But for a lot of champions out there, you don't want to use any kind of cooldown. That I mean, I guess it's not that large of a cooldown. Oh, I forgot it actually gets cooldown reduction based on your Phenomenal Evil stacks. That's kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, you use this on the Dragon. You know, they really weren't threatening the Dragon that much. So I think just using Q is probably a little bit better there. Just auto-attacking in Q. Maybe not even using Q, just autoing it. I mean, your team had it pretty easily. And you saw that Vi was in the area. You know, she was at blue, so you know she's going to try to take a peek at the dragon. So I would just hold on to your spells, honestly, and then... Like, if you want to throw Qs at the dragon, that's fine. But hold your W, because that's your heavy hitter. And then, you know, as soon as you cage him, then just W, Q, and ult him. I don't remember if you had ult or not, but... It did come down to you didn't have the W, and so she got away. So just keep that in mind. That's for a lot of other champions, too. You don't, like, if you're Zyra, for example, I play a lot of Zyra on the channel. You don't want to use, if you know there could be a fight coming up soon, don't use both of your plants on the dragon to take it. Um, you know, only use one plant on the dragon and then save one plant for when they show up. And don't use your E, for example, your crowd control is Zyra on the dragon. Just use one plant plus your Q. So just save a little bit in the tank and just expect there to be some resistance coming up. And then you're ready to go if they do fight you. And all your stuff's not going to be on cooldown. Because, you know, it wasn't going to be that close, right? They weren't going to be able to get in there and steal it, and your um, your jungler wasn't in danger of dying to the dragon. Okay. Um, okay, so you need to back more often. You know, if you start to get... If your AD carry backs, you should almost always just go ahead and back, even if it's just to buy an amp tone, because you're not going to do anything productive, usually. Now, you were walking up and down the river, you did ward, and, you know, eventually Ramus came along, and you did start up a fight, and you guys ended up getting one or two kills, okay? So that, you kind of lucked out there. But most of the time, if you're just walking up and down the river like that, you're just kind of wasting time, especially if you don't have a sight stone yet, or the equivalent of a sight stone on your tier 2 gold item. You know, you're not really getting, like, great wards down. It's okay. But you'd just be much better served by just going back, getting an amp tome, and then showing back up to lane with more power. Um, and especially when you had, like, 2,000-something gold, after you get a couple of kills, just tell your AD carry, like, hey, back. Back with me. Let's go buy some stuff. Because um, you guys were trying to bait them with, like, no cooldowns, like, 50% HP, and each one of you had, like, over 2,000 gold in the bank. So that's... That's rough. <laughs> you need to go back and make sure you're spending that gold. Um, okay, so you need to shot call more and be more assertive with your pings. So you guys could have had that dragon like 30 seconds faster. You need to ping it immediately after you take that tower down and you push the lane up. Just say dragon, dragon, dragon. Get over there. Do the dragon, and then everyone gets out. Vi would not have even come over there to contest it if you did it earlier. Um, you could have backed, bought your items, and rotated over to mid lane 30 seconds faster. So it's really all about speed. How fast can you do everything and close out the game? You know, you need to think of it like a speed run in the game. You need to crush your lane, kill the tower, push the lane up, go get dragon, back, buy stuff, go get mid tower, go get rift herald, go top lane, crush that down, you know, and just like you know boom 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 and you got to keep people on track so you need to just tell them let's go do this let's go do that ping it like three times like drag 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 like don't be super annoying about it but you need to ping things if you want it to get done you need to do it like three times just so people pay attention to it like ping dragon timers ping you know anything you can think of 
to try to herd people and get them to where they need to be. So you need to be a bit more assertive. You did taking the dragon once and start walk, walking over there. And this came in later in the game too, you guys. After you took the uh, inhibitor, you should have rotated down. Once you saw three or four people top, people were milling around, like getting wolves, getting blue buff, like killing a couple of minions in the wave, and then rotating over to dragon. No. It should have been either immediately dragon to tier 2 tower, but when I see four people top side like that, and I know that they can't take Baron because they don't have enough armor on their jungler, I'll just immediately push up bot lane, get that tier 2, and then on the way back, grab dragon, go back, buy your stuff, and then you know, either try to push a lane like you did, or potentially bait Baron with wards. Something. But it shouldn't be, let's mill around for 30 seconds and get wolves and blue and all this stuff. And I know you're not the person who's doing those things, but you need to ping people and get them to go, like, do something more productive with your time. Okay. When inhibitor's down, that's bonus time. You can do so much stuff on the map because you have so much map pressure. And just doing things like getting wolves and blue and wasting 30 seconds to a minute of the time is not a very productive use of time. Um... Yeah, you need to be maxing E outside of lane. Um, that stun is what turns fights. Like the more your cage is up and the longer it stuns, the better your team, the better your team's chance of winning. Like a little bit more damage on your Q is probably not going to change the outcome of a fight. You know, going from like 150 damage to 230 damage and having like a one second less cooldown, like that is nice. Obviously, that's good. But that's not going to be as powerful as, you know, having an extra, you know, half second stun that's like two seconds less in cooldown or more. So you, like, you need get three points in Baleful Strike for lane because you're going to be able to sit there and just chuck these at the enemy the entire time and stack Phenomenal Evil. That's the main reason to get points in it, so that you have better lane harass and so that um, you can stack more Phenomenal Evil. But outside of lane, where you're not going to be able to sit there and just throw cues at people all day, where it's going to be too dangerous to do that, then you really want your cage to be up, because this is your main contribution to team fights. Like I said, you know, the extra 100 damage every now and then, it's good. It's not going to make a huge difference. So this does make a really huge difference if you stun people, and this is up much more often. So you need to be maxing this outside of lane. As support Vagar. Now, as mid lane Vagar... Um, you know, you're going to have a lot more AP, so Baleful Strike is going to be a bit more meaningful. Because you're going to be able to get, you know, Death Cap and Morellonomicon and all this other stuff, and you're going to have a ton of AP. So, um, you know, this is a bit more useful outside of lane, or um, in support, in the mid lane rather than the support role. But as support, since you're going to have less AP because you're going to have to get the ward item and the gold item, um, and you're just not going to have as many minion kills and all that good stuff, then you're going to want to take your utility, which is the um, Event Horizon, more often. Um, and then finally, the last thing I wanted to talk about is... Um, okay, so stay with your core team and do not split. The reason for this is when someone's split pushing... There are two ways the enemy can deal with that. Either if they have someone who's stronger, they can try to go 1v1. If they have someone who's not stronger, then they can... Uh, usually they'll have to send two people up there. Okay. The other way to deal with it is if the person is not immediately threatening a tower, then they try to engage and fight um, the four people that you have. Okay. So they just try to bum rush and engage, which is what the enemy was trying to do and what their best strategy was was they see Teemo top, he doesn't have teleport, they immediately engage on the four people that you have, press ult, like Vi presses ult, and then Rakan follows up, and then Zaya, you know, does her feather storm and blows everybody up. Okay, so that's what they should have done. They goofed that up, though. So the way that you guys can stop that is with your cage. If you're with them, then your cage is going to stop Rakan from that follow-up engage. All right, so that cage is really important for protecting against their ult so that they don't engage on your team while Teemo gets lane pressure. When you go top like that, then that makes it a 5v3 if they want to do it because you also don't have teleport. And you're not going to push it that much faster than Teemo, a little bit. Okay, So you're providing some protection for Teemo, 
but that doesn't matter because you're weakening the other three people, which is what that plays right into their strategy because their strategy is they want to engage hard engage team fight when they have superior numbers which and Vi allows that very easily so does Rakan and so it should have just been open season on your team that Rick, that uh, Ramus just was really crushing them because Ramus is pretty overpowered in solo queue right now so Ramus was you know doing some Olympic lifting there for a lot of that game but in general, that's why you don't want to go to a split pusher is because it's going to leave the rest of your team unprotected. And especially, you know, at this ELO, I don't know what it is, but like anything under Diamond, um, that the three people who are alone or the four people who are alone are not going to play a safe distance most of the time. They're going to get engaged on. They're going to fight. And so you need to be with them to help them out with that. Okay, especially if you have a really good disengage tool like the cage. Um to zone them out so they can't engage very well okay but that's gonna be it like you can take tp i know that sounds troll but if you have summoner spellbook like i mentioned before you can switch over to tp in the mid game um switch out your ignite and go for tp and then in theory you could split you could even split another side lane and just push the wave up and get some extra gold on the side and you guys could do a one three one composition and then tp in if your team's about to fight so that requires a little bit more attention to macro but that is something you can do you can split if you have TP, if you're confident that they're not going to run you down and kill you, because Vagar is not the most vicious split pusher in the world. So their team was pretty slow. They didn't have great split pressure other than, um, like, Vi coming to run you down. But anyways, that's going to be it. Thank you very much. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. So the biggest thing are just make sure that you're saving your W unless until someone is crowd controlled. Like, shot call faster. Go back. Spin your gold faster. And just don't get caught up in the fiesta. A lot of times there was some fiesta going on. Make sure you're shot calling for your team, telling them good objectives to take. Don't don't let them get away with doing wolves instead of a tower without hearing about it from you in a friendly way, like ping assist on the tower. Um, and then I highly recommend maxing your E and getting um, <clears throat> maxing your E so that you have better team fight presence, and then getting haunting guys so you have a better power spike around you know ten to twelve minutes when you get the um. Because your power spike was really delayed. And you could see that when you were catching people with your cage, you weren't fully able to kill them because you're working Morella Nomicon. If you had haunting guys there instead and you saved your W, you cage them, you QWR, you would have killed a lot more people in the mid game if you had haunting guys. Because that's such a massive power spike. Like 15 magic penetration doesn't sound like a big deal. It's a very big deal. It's a lot of damage to people who don't have magic resist yet. Okay, but that's going to be it. Thank you very much, Adam. I really appreciate it. And for anyone else out there, like I said earlier at the beginning of the video, if you're interested in a coaching session like this, just email me at thestrategyprofessor@gmail.com, or if you just want to watch more coaching sessions, I have a link for you right here, and I'll have a link in the description as well. So that's it. Thank you very much. Have a good day, and I'll see you next time.